Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. Sorry, guys. The real deal. Okay. I am Misty Doan. This is Missouri Star Live, and we are live from our main shop in Hamilton, Missouri. And if you could hear them but not me, we have our very first live studio audience. So Yay! welcome. Yes. We're so excited to be here. We're excited to have our shops open. And so we wanted to just share with all of you a little bit of what our main store looks like. That's where we are. This is our main shop here in Hamilton, Missouri. And this is where all of the magic that we have to offer starts. So let's get a shot of everybody who's watching along with us. Everybody wave. Hey, <laughs> and as always, we have Liz here. She's behind the camera usually, but she's, I think, in front of the camera today. <laughs> so so um, taking questions, and we will have questions from you guys online as well as our guests here in town. So uh, let's just see where everybody's visiting from. How about that, Liz? So let's see where we have some guests right Cincinnati. here. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. South Carolina. South Carolina. South, South Carolina. Carolina. Indiana. Indiana for both of you. Welcome, welcome. How about out here, you guys? Minnesota. Minnesota. Arkansas. Arkansas. Washington State. Washington State. I love it so much. Illinois. Illinois. Indiana. Indiana. You guys, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so, so. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. How, how far? California, West Virginia. It's so wonderful to see how far you guys have come to visit our town here in Hamilton. We are so grateful that you have taken some time out of your very busy lives to come and see us. We hope you have the most wonderful time while you're here. And let's just get a little bit of sh uh, view of the main shop if we can, Caleb. As you can see, it's beautiful. And when you come to our main shop, there is a vignette, as we call it, of each of the shops, our quilt shops you can see in town. So we have many different shops that are focused on that type of fabric, whether it's backing, floral, kids and baby, batiks. Um, there's a whole shop dedicated to those things and you can get just a little sneak peek here at the main shop and you can also pick up your shopping pass to make it easier to check out as you go about your day. So let's see, Liz, where do we have viewers online watching so from? Folks are coming from the Netherlands, oh, from wow. Wisconsin, from Sweden, from Florida. We have Jan from Southern Indiana. Oh, and awesome. Janet from Butte, Montana. So good morning to everybody online from oh, everybody it's here. So, so great. So let's see, do we have any questions we want to start with? Let's see. So one of the questions we get asked a lot is, what's it like having the shops reopened? Oh. So let's talk about that a minute. Okay, absolutely. So for me, uh, having the shops open was surprisingly um, emotional the first few days. I was just so relieved to have a little bit of normalcy back mm -hmm. in my life. And so seeing the streets filled with cars and visitors and people happy to be shopping and buying beautiful fabrics just filled me to overflowing. I was just, it was just the best. So truly, I just cannot thank you guys enough for venturing out and coming to see us. It has just been amazing to have everything, everything back. And I know our, our incredible shop workers are so grateful to be back in the stores. And uh, they, they were troopers and helped us out in the warehouse through everything. And, and now they're happy to be back here helping all of you. So it's, it's just awesome. All right, what's okay. next? Any questions here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Did you quilt before you joined a family? So that's a great question. I get asked that one a lot. So I, I wouldn't say that I quilted actively a lot, but I have generations of quilters in my family. So I helped my grandma a lot. She actually... Um, uh, ended up passing away from cancer and as part of that treatment she lost some of the use of her right hand and so she loved to quilt and so I still spent a lot of time quilting with her and helping her um, finish some quilts and I have some of those now which I is such a treasure and I actually had a moment um, over Mother's Day my mom and I went through some of our heirloom quilts and it was this great reminder to me that truly I mean back like five or six generations most of the women in my family are quilters. So it's pretty pretty special. So that's a great question. Thank you. So Annette wants to know how many quilt shops are there in Hamilton and are all of them part of the MSQC family? Okay, so are there 12? Is that right? There are 12 unique plus shops Man's in town. Land. Plus what? Man's Land. Plus Man's Land. So there's 12 quilt shops plus Man's Land plus there's now a Nancy's Notion store. There's Let's Make Art, which is awesome art supplies, and uh, they have great tutorials too. It's, it's super, super fun. And then we also have a big happy um, yarn company. So that's for like all your knitting and crochet needs. And so they are, 
those last three are our sister brands and the quilt shops are all part of, yes, Missouri Star. So, so the things that you see in town are um, a lot of the same things that you'll see in online, but it's set up and it's beautiful and really, really fun to see. So that's a great question. Anyone Any else here right have here? a question? No. Okay. All right. So we also want to know is, let's see, will you be hosting 2021 quilting retreats in Hamilton, Missouri this year? Oh, so will we be hosting retreats? Yes, we are. We have retreats. There's retreaters you guys here. Have retreaters. Yes. So, so right now we have our sisters on the fly retreat happening. Yay! So, so that is so awesome. And I think we have retreats all year long. I know our Doan Girls retreats uh, are sold out for this year, and we'll have more scheduled for next year. And so we're so, so excited to welcome you guys back in that capacity too. Our retreats team is incredible. They are so, so great. So much fun. So thank you guys for coming. So, so fun. So Amla from India wants to know, how early can you get your kids started on sewing and quilting? How early? Okay, that's a good question. For me, I usually start with basic straight seams around nine, I think is a good age. Uh, my daughter started a little bit before that, but she get, they just get bored really quick. And so the thing that you wanna make sure of when you start sewing with kids is, can they maneuver the fabric under the machine and, and can they sew a straight line? That's really it. And so we, we usually start with like just lined notebook paper and just no, you don't even need thread in the machine, just let them <laughs> try and follow the lines on the notebook paper. And then eventually you can just draw squiggles and have them follow the squiggles. And it just helps them learn how to maneuver under the needle. Um, Cause there's a lot of, um, you know, different dynamics in making all the, the foot pedal and your hands and everything do what you want. So you don't want kids too young, but you could for sure start them hand sewing younger than that. Cool, okay. What's we also next? have, Annette says, when's the best time to visit Hamilton if I'm planning a cross-country visit? We have several cross-country visitors yeah, too. Yeah, we so have so many cross-country visitors. Get some tips. So I would say um, any time is really a great time. Uh, right now, we tend to have a, a fairly wet spring, so it is a little rainy today and this week. So we're hoping for some sunshine to come through, but truly there's always something going on in town. So. Um, we try to make it worth a visit any time that you come to see us. But I, my personal favorites are probably spring and fall. It gets real, real hot in the summer, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> no. And the quilt shops are cool. So, you know, a good place to cool off. Okay, so another good question is, is there going to be a birthday bash this year? There will be a birthday bash. Meg is deep in planning all of the festivities for birthday bash, bash this year. It's gonna be very fun. That's always in September. Um, and I believe it's usually the third weekend. Is that right? Yep. So we're looking at somewhere in the 23rd to 25th, I believe. That's right. Somewhere 23rd to the 25th of this year. So if you want to make a plan to come visit for Birthday Bash, that will be going on. We have a great time. We sing. We dance. Sometimes there's pinatas. It's just, and they're full of quilting supplies, not candy. So it's very, very fun. So right. come to the, Birthday Bash. There's it's a great. cake dance and it's a layer cake dance, I believe. Oh, there, yes. And right. cake dances are layer cake dances. So, you know, it's very, all very good. Fun. It's all good. Yeah, okay, so it. one of the questions too is, um, I mentioned Man's Land. Marianne Lucas wants to know, what is Man's Land? Oh, that's right. So Man's Land, okay. I feel like I have to tell this story because I saw a comment about this online. Man's Land is just a place to slow down and kick up your feet. And the reason it's called Man's Land is not that it's just for men, but it's actually a nod to a shop that used to be on Main Street here in Hamilton. Right. There was a store here in town called Man's Land where they could come and get their suits and get haircuts and get all the things that, that they needed. And so it, it's by no means means that any ladies are not welcome, but uh, it is usually quite often full of husbands kicked back watching some TV while their wives shop. But it's welcome for everyone and it's a great place to you know, play around a pool. There's a pool table in there and grab some snacks if you need it. So it's just, just a place to, to relax if you've worn yourself out from shopping all day. So take a break. So I know one of your favorite tools that you've shown several times on live is the diagonal seam tape. Emily yes. Stage wants to know, are there any tips for using the diagonal seam okay, tape? Okay, that's funny. Someone has just bought diagonal seam tape. Was it you? Can I see your, your little <laughs> packet? I was just telling her about it. Okay, Caleb, can you come in close here so we can show people? So diagonal seam tape, okay, I'm gonna open it up. She says it's fine. 
<laughs> so diagonal seam tape comes on a roll just like your normal tape and there are two black lines. Those represent your quarter inch seams and the red line is your needle line. So you want to line that up right with where your needle is on your machine. And the reason this is so handy is yes, it gives you a longer guide of where that quarter inch line is. But I especially love it for snowballing corners um, and things like that because you can just put your points right on the red line of the diagonal seam tape. And instead of having to draw a line or press a line, you can know that your needle is going to go straight from point to point. And so it's super, super helpful. It's a great tool. We have it on all of our machines because now we all can't sew without it. <laughs> so, but, and I do think it makes your seams mo more accurate, um, which is, there are some, I believe it's uh, right underneath the TV up there, if I remember correctly. That's where you found it, right? Yep. So there's that. I'll put it back together for you. Thank you for sharing. So that's diagonal seam tape. It's an awesome tool. And it lasts forever. So one uh, roll will last you, so far for me, it's been two years. So I, I mean, and it's, there's still some on it. Because I don't find that I need to change it very often. It doesn't get in the way of what I'm doing. So it's a great tool. What's up next, Liz? All right, so we also want to know, are there campgrounds for campers nearby? There are a couple campgrounds nearby. So we have one located right here in town. It's called a Country Charm RV Park, and I think it might be full for the year, the last I heard from him, but keep checking. They're awesome. And we also have a few state parks that are not too far. Um, so there's a couple different options. Um, Oh, awesome. And so like even in Cameron, which is just about 15 minutes away, there's Wallace State Park, which is, has great facilities. And so there's Missouri has beautiful state parks. So if you can find a state park close, that would be a great option too. Yes. Okay. Now we have somebody asking for help. Yeah. She says, I am making a jelly roll rug. Can I use invisible thread so it's not seen and will it hold up and can you iron it with invisible thread? So that's a great question Big about using invisible thread with Jelly Roll rugs. If you are using a high quality invisible thread, you can iron it, even, even though it's stretchy and clear and plastic. Jenny proved it to me, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm not so sure, but hers held up beautifully and it did great. I personally don't work with invisible thread very often, so I don't feel like I can speak to it. It makes me nervous. I'm just always afraid it's gonna stick up in my machine and, right. and not stitch right. So for me, I would just rather have my stitches show. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you should, you should absolutely be fine. Just make sure you're getting a high quality um, invisible thread. And one tip too that Jenny's mentioned, yeah. so I want to repeat this, is if you're using invisible thread, you use that in the spool on the, the top. Yes, You use never regular in the cotton thread in the bobbin. If you put it in both, you're going to be in agony city. That's right. You <laughs> so. never want it in your bobbin. Just in the top, yep. Uh, it doesn't work, no. I did that. Not worth it. So one more question on the, invis uh, the diagonal seam tape. Uh -huh. um, Jackie wants to know, how do you, I'm sorry, Zainer wants to know, it's hard for me to get the tape straight. How do you get the tape straight on your machine? Any tips there? Okay, so I do a lot of eyeballing, but um, usually you can also find a point like on the side of your machine and just use your ruler to measure over and kind of just check and make sure that your lines are going as straight as possible. Um, there's probably no great science to make sure it's exactly right. I love to lay um, my ruler, like I'll put my quarter inch line right on my needle of like, I'll line it up with my machine. I don't have a machine to show, but um, I'll just have my sewing machine, put, use my ruler, sit, line it up right with the needle, and then I'll just kind of make sure that that line of the tape is right, running right along the edge of the ruler. And that's the best way I've found. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you. Here we go. I know you're so strong. And so here, we only have a big ruler, but you can see here, we would just lift the presser foot and I would just make sure wherever my needle comes down and then, and then I would just have this run right along the edge. And you can see this is a pretty straight edge, so I can just make sure that this is straight on my ruler and just as many places as you can check to make sure things are square or straight, the better success you're going to have. So that's, not, I mean, not a, a great tip, but it's the most helpful I can be in that one. That's, that's <laughs> totally fair. Sorry. It's all right. So Charlene's asking, what's the name of the Dresden quilt behind you? So I had to look around to figure okay, out which one it is. Yes. So one of the things that's awesome about the main shop is we've got quilts hanging up all over the place. So you can check out quilts yep. as a shop from the main library of all the quilts mm -hmm. Jenny's ever made. So I'm going to walk over here. So this is actually my quilt from our triple play. 
right? Yes, I so cannot remember what I called it. Fancy Dresden Fans. There we go. <laughs> And of course, we do have the tutorial on YouTube. Yep, absolutely. And then you can grab any of the supplies. It looks so good in so many fabrics. We love seeing what you guys do yes. with different fabrics. Yeah, it's so great. So you hear so me great. saying all the time, if you use hashtag MSQC show and tell, then we can gather all those pictures of your projects and see what yep. you've done. So it's really and awesome And so to that see. one um, and all of the quilts that you see here, this is actually something that is really cool about our shops in town. Any quilt that you see hanging up is going to have a tag on it. And every single one of them is a tutorial. Every single one, and if it's in Block Magazine, the tag will tell you which issue of Block it's in. Yep, so, so for example, find, yep. we're also asked what's the black and white quilt, so that is, check out my tutorial in Block Magazine, it's the Bordered Nine Patch, found yep. in Volume 5, Issue 2. Yep, and so all of that information, we make it easy for you. <laughs> so it's super, super great. So does anybody else here have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Sure. When you, um start a design of a new pattern what's the thought process or how how do you start that that's a great question so it's kind of all over the place because for me and jenny i design usually at bare minimum a project a week um, often it's it's like five or six a month so it's a lot <laughs> that we are are working through and so um, sometimes it's just like you have to start sewing and hope something happens and sometimes the fabric might kind of guide the inspiration. We have recently kind of started giving ourselves, um, we have these creative summits where we come together and we're like, what's something we want to try? What if we did this with this template? And we kind of take all the different ideas that we have and just um, block it out on a schedule so that we don't have to come up with every idea on the fly. And that has really, really helped. But um, we just try to still allow as much room as possible for creativity in there because that's what's so fun about what we do. But it really does come from all over the place. I mean, uh, recently on, I'm working on a 60 degree quilt that will be coming out later in the year. <laughs> so it's, 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 we work pretty far ahead too, which I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize. So like the quilt I'm working on probably won't release until October. Um, but I found one of those heirloom quilts I was talking about earlier, I, it's not made with a 60 degree, but I think I can replicate it easier with that 60 degree uh, ruler. So that's, you know, some of those things when we see old antique quilts, how can we make it simpler? How can we um, uh, just change things up? And so there's just so much to pull inspiration from. And uh, Jenny and I joke a lot that sometimes it's like hotel carpet. Now you'll never see hotel carpet the same. So, <laughs> but um, there, yeah, inspiration can just be found everywhere. It's pretty amazing once you once you start looking for it and, and give it an opportunity to grow. It's pretty fun. So I'm going to ask one more question online. I'm going to come over to this side. Great. Um, Kayla says, I'm a done is better than perfect quilter. What is one mistake you never fix? And what is one that you will unpick and resell? Oh, that's, an, a, that's a good question. So I don't know that I have a specific mistake that I'm going to fix every time? Oh wait, I do. Sorry, just kidding. Um, I, if there's a real bad pucker, like if I am trying to make my blocks match and it ends up with like a tuck in the seam, almost every time I'm going to take it out. It just, I, it bothers me. And so that's the one for me. But, but I think it's important to remember if, Jenny has a rule, if you look at it three times and it still bothers you three times, just take it out and fix it. But a lot of times once you sew it all together, and you quilt it up, you're never going to find that mistake again. Like, it's just, it's just not worth the stress. And, and the thing that's important for me, because I do have to stay creative and excited about what I'm doing, I can't get too in the weeds. I just have to let the process and the journey kind of happen. Um, because the truth is, it is a learned skill. Jenny says that all the time. And the more time we spend sewing, the better we're going to get. And we have an opportunity to see those quilts as they progress and see our own progress along the way. I actually just found one of the first quilts I made when we opened Missouri Star, um, which was in a shop across town. <laughs> it's just offices now. But I found it, and I had never quilted it. I had never set the blocks together because they were just awful. So my <laughs> seams are just probably a half inch. I mean, they're just two a quarter inch, none of them are straight. They were just a mess. And so finally, earlier this year, I said, you know what? This is a part of my journey. And so I took all of those blocks and I, I cut them all square. So even though they're very wonky, I squared them all up and then I sewed them together so that I have a finished quilt. Because it's important for us to honor every phase of our journey. And for me, that was a big turning point to remember, okay, 
I've been doing this a while now, and, and I've come a long way, and, and you know, it's all right. That's, that's part of it. All right, Liz, who's right. up next? There's a question over here. Did I imagine that part? No question. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. We'll Anybody? get back to the Anybody? online questions. All right. Okay. So, is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. You're good. You no guys worries. are asking great questions. Um, on the last Block Magazine show and tell, you tease the international audience about Block being digitally available soon to us. So there's actually a Block party tonight. Yes. Tune into that. It is still soon. It's not just yet. Yeah. But we are working really hard on getting a digital um, subscription, subscription available. available. So that's a great question. Um, which sewing machine do you recommend? There's like one that we use on set often. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts on that one? Okay, so I personally sew on a Baby Lock Accomplish, or Jane is the, the old one, so mine at home is called Jane, and mine at work is called an Accomplish, but it's the same machine. Um, it is just an industrial, straight stitch, fast machine. Jenny sews on the same one. If you're doing a lot of piecing, it's amazing. If you, do, if you want those decorative stitches and um, you like to do machine applique, it doesn't do any of that. And so I always have to preface it. Most of what I do, almost 98% of what I do is straight, straight seams. And so um, for me, it's the best. I love it so much. And if I try and move to anything else, I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I just find that it has a really great consistent stitch. It sews beautifully and it's quick and it works great. So that's what I sew on. All right, June McCormick Newland says hello to the sisters on the fly who are visiting. Yay! So, shout out to you guys. The <laughs> questions are also coming in. When you're making a wonky star and you're putting on the second wing, does it cross over the center of the background or should I see a bit of the first star? So, we do wonky stars a lot. Yeah. Do you have it cross over? Does so it the, matter? The, uh, is she referring to the second leg? The second of, leg of the. Okay, that so star. that should cross over the center of the other leg. So it, it not necessarily the, the background, it needs to cross over the center of the other leg so that you have at least that quarter inch seam allowance from the star legs. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, Chris says, I'm about to put a baby quilt patchwork onto a cuddle or minky background. Ooh. Do I use the wadding too? So do you use batting also, or do you just go for the minky background? I still use batting with my uh, baby quilts that have uh, minky backing. I like a big cuddly, uh, Quilt and honestly, any of our batting is is very low loft, so you're not going to get all that extra puff, um, and it just kind of holds everything together and makes it feel nice and stable and sturdy. The minky has a uh, quite a bit of stretch to it naturally, and so I'm afraid if you didn't use the batting, you would get a lot of kind of give and, and wonkiness to it, which would still be soft and cuddly for a baby. So you just kind of have to decide uh, what you want. But if you want like a, a flat nice quilt, I would go with batting. Okay. So Sherry says, I think quilters are critical of our work. When others see our quilts, they don't say the mistakes. They love them. That's I think exactly that's an right. awesome I good agree. reminder for us. <laughs> I agree. All right. Any hints on finishing off an old quilt top? So you were talking about you found your old box. What do you do with a quilt from quite a while ago? She says, mine's from 1933. It has a stain in it. Wow. Um, so Jenny actually talked a little bit about antique quilts. She does a little... Um, chat in her the all-stars group are you guys on our all-stars face facebook group okay if you're not you should join it's a lot of fun um and jenny pops in there sometimes with little tips and so she she talked a little bit about um what to do with antique quilts and honestly i i am by no means an expert <laughs> on what to do with antique quilts i love them that's what i know about them um but i think there's lots of experts out there. You can go to a quilt museum if you have one in your area and they will be able to recommend the best way to handle it, to care for it, to clean it. Um, if you have blocks, they can you, give you some ideas on how to set those. We have a great um, state museum that's located right here in Hamilton, the Missouri Quilt Museum. They're awesome. And you know, like I imagine you could even call like the National Quilt Museum and, and ask them, hey, what do I do here? Um, because that is their, their hope, is to preserve these amazing pieces of art. And so we just want to make sure we treat them well. I know you don't want to store them in plastic. A lot of people want to put them in those like bedding things. Don't do that. <laughs> it's a bad idea because they do need to breathe. And um, otherwise, they'll get musty inside of that. So, so just um, love them. Try and avoid direct sunlight. Um, and just, just care for them. 
So we have a lot of folks saying thank you for the advice to honor your journey. So that's one of our big takeaways and one of our finished is better than perfect. Absolutely. Finish that quote, have fun with it, start the next one. That's exactly right. right. You, you don't, don't get too in the weeds and, and worried about seams or points. Um, none of that's going to matter. And when it's all done, it's going to be quilted and beautiful. So uh, yeah. anything else? We've got Any just more a few questions more here? Sure. When you do your triple play, yeah. do you start with fabric or a pattern first, and how do you 3-0 sort of get that going? <laughs> so usually Great with our question. triple play, um, in those creative summits that I talked about, we kind of plan for the next quarter what we want to tackle. And so we usually have either a block that is our inspiration or a template that is our inspiration or uh, an old tutorial that is our inspiration, wh whatever it might be. And so then we kind of go from there. And depending on how much time we have, um, each of our creative processes is a little bit different. So Jenny truly just sits down and sews almost every time. Like she just starts playing and seeing how's it, how it comes out. I do a little bit more um, like digital design. So I'll work in EQ8 or something like that and play with shapes and, and sizes um, and see what I want to do. And Natalie is kind of a mixture of both. She does, she does some of both. And so from there, depending on if we have like a really good idea. So like there was one project coming up where I was like, I really want this to be rainbow. And so then our awesome product team can support that. But a lot of the time, uh, we don't necessarily know what fabric we're going to get. And so it, it's just kind of a mystery um, of what's going to be coming. That's getting better. We're getting a little <laughs> bit more um, insight into what's coming. And that helps with the creative process. Because sometimes um, different fabrics are suited to different things. But most of the time, quilts are beautiful no matter what you make them in. And so a lot of the times the design will lead it and then we're just surprised at how beautiful it turns out no matter what the fabric is. So it's really fun. I mean, we all love all the fabrics, right? <laughs> so, so, so great. We, we have one more question about where are we right now? So Oh, that's great. So we one. are in our main shop in Hamilton, Missouri. So this is a main shop for Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, many people don't know that, yes, we're online and we have great tutorials, but we also have 12 awesome quilt shops here in town. And so our main shop is where all the fun starts when you come to visit us here. So we've got a live audience with us, and they've been so fun to join along and, and you know, participate and give this a go, because this is our first run. So we appreciate you guys being brave and letting yes, us test thank it out. You. So it's so, so awesome. And so, yes, this is it. This is our main shop. So hopefully you're getting a pan of our wonderful shop workers and everyone shopping about. So it's been so fun. Yep. But. All right, I think that is it. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank you for being here, and I will see you next week.